seems to be, are, are we alone? Uh, are we the only living things in the universe? And so where would we look? Well, clearly planets around other stars are a place to look, but there are some places that are closer to home. And I'll show you a picture of one that Galileo discovered. This is uh, called Europa. It's one of the four moons of Jupiter that he discovered. Uh, and uh, two or maybe three of those moons have an ocean covered with ice. <coughs> so here you see the surface of this moon, and you see the white color, the ice, and you see also these sort of mud-colored cracks between the pieces of ice. So you would say, well, why, why don't we go look and see if that ocean's alive? Now, if we land on the surface, we're pretty sure that what's on the surface is not alive, because this is a very hostile place to live. Uh, but on the other hand, if you could learn how to analyze the, <coughs> the components of the mud that's coming up, or alternatively to drill through the ice with something, maybe you could learn something more complete about it. Maybe it's alive. <coughs> so there are two chances there, as well as everybody knows that Mars was wet and could have been alive. Now we know in the last uh, few months, we know that two satellites of, Ju of Saturn could also possibly be alive because the satellite Titan, which we have a, we sent a probe to land on the surface and we've mapped the surface many times, we've seen that the surface, which we think is covered with ice, has actually been changing its shape. Ice has been moving over the last six years or so since we've been measuring. So conclusion is that it's floating on something liquid underneath, like water ocean. So Titan might be wet and alive. And even uh, more strangely, there's a small moon of Saturn which has uh, geysers, water geysers, that are spritzing out hot water. Um, and so we'll say, what's underneath that? Well, could that be alive? It's a pretty unlikely place that that's to be alive. But nevertheless, four places in the solar system besides Earth and Mars that are wet and maybe could be alive. So you know, that's certainly a place to go look. Now, coming back to the look, looking for life around planet, on planets around other stars, we clearly need a bigger telescope than even the James Webb telescope to really find out. So this is one way that people have, and this is quite difficult, uh, but this is uh, basically pursuing Albert Michelson's technique, um, the same guy that got the Nobel Prize in 1907, um, combine light from this distant star from several different telescopes, collect in many places, and beam it all over here to this fifth place and maybe make an image. Uh, maybe you can see the light from the planet. So uh, maybe this will be the way we do it, maybe some other way, um, but in the next few decades we could do this. So uh, what would we look for? Uh, what we are looking for as signs of life as, uh, illustrated here. If you could find a planet where there were these three chemical compounds in the atmosphere, you would say it's alive. What's here? Water, need water. Uh, carbon dioxide, sort of basic. Uh, but here's this one special, ozone. Uh, ozone or oxygen. Uh, our planet has ozone and oxygen because of photosynthesis. And so if we found a planet where there was this combination, we would say, you know, not only is it alive, it's got photosynthesis. So maybe it's like here. Now, maybe it's not like here. Maybe we would not find this pattern, and it doesn't mean it's not alive. But this is an objective. And if we could find an Earth-like planet, it would probably do this. So that's one of the great hopes of astronomy. So I'm going to wrap up and uh, tell you that there's some things I cannot answer. Here's some questions I cannot answer, but maybe you all will help us answer these things by and by, or especially the students may get to answer these, because these are hard questions. Uh, but anyway, I would welcome questions from you, uh, and maybe some easier questions. Thanks. Question, okay. Uh, have we got a microphone for you? Just a second. All right, you said there's no center and no edge, but then when you say we're looking at the edge, you just mean further out. Uh, yeah, I mean as far as we can see. Okay. When I say edge. You just said there was no edge. There, yeah, we think there's no edge, but there's a limit to how far we can see, and so there's a kind of observable edge. Yeah. And that, okay, here's a question. Um, how did the Nobel Prize change your life? How did the Nobel Prize change my life? Uh, well, I, I must say I've been very much in demand as a public speaker ever since, and uh, I like to tell the story of the universe, and so. Um, also, it's, uh, well, it's a little confusing because there's so many new opportunities of what to do. But that's the main thing, is more public speaking. But mostly, I just want to work on this new telescope, the James Webb Telescope, and get that really to go. Because that's the next th big thing for astronomers. More questions? <coughs> 